might be easier than dancing this year. I did get a lot of requests last night for dancing, what the dance was going to be. Wanted a preview. No. Um, the airdrop actually hurt a little bit more than the dance, but hey, everyone was terribly worried about a face-first sprawl. So today's going really well. There was no sprawl. But uh, how many people have been here before? Yeah, a lot of repeats. I like seeing that. We got people from 27 different countries this year. Uh, about 3,000 people that are registered. So excited to continue to see this getting bigger. Uh, the, it's really fun seeing the contingencies from some of our bigger customers too. There's uh, dozens of people from, uh, from some of our larger customers. So you see them walking around. And uh, I think collectively, I asked someone to take a look. The customers that are in the audience, four trillion rows of data that you guys are putting into the system. So it is definitely a big, big system. It's fun to see the power of the data. Fifth anniversary of Donald Palooza. We've got, um, we've got some good, it, you know, some people don't like the Domo Palooza component, like people in my finance group, um, people in my legal group. You know, they're like, why, maybe we shouldn't have special guest speakers. Maybe we shouldn't have artists. Like, but it's Domo Palooza. So, good thing I named it that a long time ago because it's not a debate anymore. We're gonna make it, uh, you know, business in the front, party in the back. Uh, we come from the 70s, so let's rock and roll. Um, but uh, it, is, it is really exciting to have you here. It's so fun. My favorite thing, reception last night, just talking to customers that love to come up and <laughs> tell me how much it's changed their life. And, uh, you know, I felt like I was at church last night because there was a couple test, there was, there was some people testifying last night, which was fantastic. And uh, we've got some folks here from What's the auto body, Boyd's? I know you guys are out there. Maybe they partied too hard. <laughs> the largest uh, collision company in the world, uh, public company in the world, literally we closed the place out last night. And uh, you know, this guy's almost 60. He's like, I'm so pissed off that I didn't get this when I was 40. He's like, I'm like, well you still got 20 years. He's like, you think I wanna be doing this when I'm 80? And, uh, but he was so jazzed about how it's changed their whole company. And, and uh, they went from having no visibility into you know, hundreds of stores to complete visibility. And uh, then talking to another customer last night that showed me in real time, this is a Fortune 100 company, how their CXOs are able to see hundreds of billions of dollars of transactions that are happening and they understand how they're happening. For the first time, they're getting real-time information about that. It's not going through some secret IT, BI group. It's literally compiled data coming out to them, to the CXOs in real time, totally changing the way that they think about their business and the way that they run their business. So uh, one thing that I'm really excited about is how far along Domo's come as well. Uh, this has obviously been a big partnership with you, and I've mentioned that every year. You know, this is the way we build our company, we have an idea, you go and you build something, you fulfill your vision, and then talk to customers and find out how screwed up it is or how directionally accurate it is, and then you iterate, iterate, iterate. And it's been uh, really a great experience for all of us to see how many happy customers we have and how it is changing the way you run your businesses. And I'm gonna talk a lot about the future today, what's possible uh, by using Domo and how many of you are using it. This is the first year where we had way too much content coming at us. Uh, not only from product announcements, I mean we pushed several product announcements that I have in my pocket on my phone that I'm using every day and we're gonna wait till the fall to show some of them because there's just too much stuff to show and too much stuff to announce, which is a fun place to be. We have too many customers that wanted to be on stage talking to all of you and showing you how it is that they're transforming their business. And that's a really exciting place to be as well. So the, I think, well, some of the announcements that we have, um, obviously uh, the biggest one that happened this last year, we became a public company. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the press when we went public. It was amazing. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. <clears throat> uh, it, was, it was somewhat painful, uh, but it was an important step for us to be able to go out and raise the last amount of money that we needed in order to get to profitability. And, you know, we've talked about it before, but we've, we've put about $400 million into the product, just R&D, just engineers. And, and you put $400 million of R&D into your product, you expect a much, much larger company to come out of it than we are right now. And that's what we expect, and that's what we're excited about. But we wanted to make sure we got that last bit of funding so that all of you felt confident and all of our customers felt confident that this is the platform that you can bet your business on. And so we were able to go out and raise enough money to make sure that we were able to get to profitability. Even though we continue to invest aggressively, uh, the model is working and we have enough cash to get to profitability with what we have right now. So it's exciting to be in that spot and it's, it was really the, uh, the IPO process. Uh, it's my second IPO. Um, I am a little bit proud secretly proud, maybe not so secretly proud of the fact that there's only a handful of people that have started and taken companies public. And that was my second, I mean, more than one, that was my second one. Uh, hopefully my last one, because I want to do this for a long time. But it was, it was, the part of the experience that wasn't painful uh, was every single one of our investors said that they had checked with many customers and every single one of the customers said positive things. And they were just like, as positive and as big of fans as you guys have, like, we're willing to bet on this thing because we know what's gonna happen. And so that was really rewarding. I mean, it was without fail. Sometimes, you know, when you look at the negative press uh, around the IPO um, and contrasted that with the, the rabid fans that we had with, with uh, some of the folks that, that uh, they talked to, which I presume were all in this audience, uh, they were just like, um, I've rarely seen this, if ever, this kind of support from the customer base. So all the Domo employees that are in the crowd, let's give a round of applause to our customers for being <laughs> such good representatives. So a big shout out to all of you. I think uh, in terms of Domo Palooza, we've got not only a lot of great um, customer announcements um, and, and customers you're gonna hear from. I'm gonna bring several up on stage here in the next little bit. Uh, we also have a bunch of product announcements that we're gonna make uh, and I'll get to that um, when I'm done talking about the platform because the platform is what's really interesting to me. Uh, we've been, we didn't start this to compete with anybody that was out there. Uh, we started this to solve the problem that I had in my last public company. And that is, I didn't have all the information about my own business. Uh, just like this Fortune, Fortune 100 company I was talking to last night, and they were talking about, you know, they didn't have access. And this is, a, you know, all the, all the assets in the world, all the resources in the world. And they couldn't get real-time information about their business. Well, here I was running a public company, smaller public company. I didn't have real-time information about my business. It never made sense. So that's why I started this business. And... Uh, I really wanted to be able to connect to all my information, see it all in real time, distribute it to everybody, have conversations about it. And I had no idea what was gonna go into that. And that ended up being, and you all could have told me, ended up being a lot harder than you know, I ignorantly thought it was gonna be. But we set out to, to, to accomplish that. So with that, I wanna walk through, there's a bunch of great things that are coming out, a bunch of great announcements that are coming out. Um, you've seen some of the apps that we've announced. You've seen data science that we've announced. Um, we've got IoT solutions that we're gonna be showing off. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff uh, in, the, in the vein of AI, machine learning that's in the product and that enables you to leverage that for your own businesses. And all of these things are possible because of the power of the Domo platform. And we finally have finished the platform. And so that's what I wanna show you uh, I want to show you the, the digital transformation flywheel, if you will. So, to start off, first, you've got your data. And you've got data brings in the people. People, of course, bring in the systems. And then they want to connect to other systems. And that brings in more data. And 
Catherine backstage. Let's slow this down because I don't have a clicker. But this brings in more data. And in fact, if someone does have a clicker, I'd love you to bring it to me. Um, but thank you. You're on cue. So more data, of course, you see the more data in there. You, of course, you want to bring in more. That brings in more people because they hear of the data. They're accessible. So they go get the more data, and that more people brings in. They're like, oh, well, what about this system? What about that system? And this flywheel just starts cranking. The first step in, in digital transformation is digitization. A lot of people think they have a digitally transformed company when they've digitized everything. Obviously, not the case. That's just the first step. Second step is having this large system where you've got real-time connectivity to all of it. It's massively scalable. It has to be. It has to be streaming so that you can get that data out in real time, so that you can enable things down the road, like you know, real-time alerting so that you can have real-time workflow, so that you can have real-time approvals, so that you can have machine learning that's taking place. And all of this comes from step two, having a real-time connectivity to all your data in a massively scalable situation. So this is where I think most of our customers are, at least at this level, right? And uh, another customer I was talking to last night started off with five people in Domo, then it went to 30, then I went to 300, and now they're at 3,000. And uh, we've got another customer here that started off with a couple hundred, went to 1,500, now they're at 15,000. And so it's, this part is true. And it just cranks it up, spreads it throughout the organization. And really, there's no other product on earth that does that at that kind of scale with that many people. So what you really have here is a digital transformation platform. And that's what it is that Domo does. Now, once you have this platform going, of course, you can kick off alerts. And that, of course, brings in more people. Then these more people, the alerts, now I think you're looking at really what step three is. Now you can actually start driving these actions uh, based off of the data. So now all your people are in there. You've got workflow. It's bi-directional. You can write back to these systems. And not everybody in here is taking advantage of that. Not everyone's at stage, at stage three. Not everyone here is writing back to their systems based on actions, transactions, what if scenarios that are taking place. But that's what's possible in stage three of digital transformation. So another thing that's really cool is data science. All your data is in one place. What can you do with that? 90% of data science is the preparation work. How do you find those anomalies? How do you find those correlations? Well, typically, a customer is going to have to go and come up, they're going to have to find some PhD somewhere, and they're going to go and come up with their ideas about what they want to do with the data. And then they're going to have to go grab that data set, put it in some system, crunch through the data, and then see if it produced anything worth looking at. Were there even anomalies and correlations that existed that are worth talking about? And then once you found them, then taking that information and using it in some way, that's a, that's a really big process and a really big bar, a really large investment in order just to try to find out if there's correlations in your data. Well, what Domo does now, now that you've got all this data there, if you're using our data science, we can go through and find interesting correlations automatically. And so one of the things that we're announcing today, and you'll see on stage, is something we like to call did you know. You wake up in the morning, you pull out your phone, the machines overnight went through and found interesting correlations and anomalies in your data. And like the first one that I got that was interesting, did you know the most profitable rep in your company is in Japan? No, I had no idea. I never would have asked that question. And what does this mean? And then we started looking into it and discovered a whole slew of things that I had no idea were happening in our organization uh, that we needed to address, take advantage of, replicate, and it's had an impact on our business. So that's also something that's interesting. Another thing that happened, we have uh, a customer that recently started using uh, data science and went through and built 12 different algorithms to figure out how to reorder uh, for their customers. As their customers were buying their products, 
uh, when they were trying to figure out, okay, what kind of inventory should we put together, they went through and created 12 different algorithms. And the data science, you know, this normally would have taken them weeks, months, and they're able to do it literally in a matter of hours. And we're looking at billions of rows of data, 12 different algorithms that are all testing and trying to predict what orders to make. And then another, another algorithms weighting these different algorithms. And they improved their, it improved the, the order that was, that ended up being worth five, over $5 million and it literally took a couple of hours. And that would have never taken place if the requirement was take out the data, find the PhD, crunch through the data, build all the algorithms, see what happens. Oh, didn't work. Let's rinse and repeat, try it again. The machine's now doing all of that beginning work and finding really interesting correlations. So I would strongly encourage you to, 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 look, to talk with our data science team and look at the predictive component. But that's what you, now you're at stage four, AI and machine learning. All, you, you've all done the work to put your data in the platform. So now you have to leverage the power of that platform and you need to use the artificial intelligence and, intelligence and machine learning that's available. So now, the other cool things that happen, of course, more people come in. Now you can start you know, taking the goals, taking the indexes, taking did you know, and applying all of this and really get a robust way to run your business. And once all of this data is here, all these systems, now of course you can build apps. And this is the part that's really, I think, changed in the last little bit for us, is we, it took us a while to get apps to where they're as robust as they are now. Like literally, we've cr over 12,000 apps have been created uh, on the platform. And uh, Domo, we've created, we've helped our customers create about 1,000 of those, but over 12,000 apps have been created. And we have customers that will go and say, hey, I've got, I'll give you some examples. I've got all this data. I've got all the systems here. Is there a way that I can create an app that allows me to read the information in, write information back out, and maybe present it to a customer or present it to our internal users, but I want it to look just a certain way, and I want it to have some additional functionality. Well, yeah, we've built an entire app framework. We've invested probably $100 million into an app framework. Of course, you can, you can do that. Anything you can imagine, we can build on top of this platform, and it really is the power of the platform. And as we show this to more and more CIOs, I'd also encourage you to get your rep to come in and meet with your CIO because that's when the relationship has changed for us with our customers. When we're in talking with the CIOs, we show them this, we show them the power of the platform, and then the CIOs typically will sit back and say, I actually have four projects coming up over the next couple of years that I didn't know how I was going to solve. I didn't realize you guys were this big and broad of a platform. So, that's been a really exciting uh, change in our business as we've finally been able to increase and, and add all this functionality. So you have all these applications. You've heard us talk about the seven samurais. Well, that's what's underneath. Connect, Adrenaline, Fusion, Buzz, Explorer, Mr. Robot on the App Store. All of those different engines are what power this platform. And I don't know how many of you have seen the architecture slide, but when you think about how this works together, you know, these different samurais are what build our architecture. So, of course, it's all about getting the data in at the beginning, and that's Connect. Federated data access has become a larger and larger part of our business, especially if we've, as we've got larger enterprises as customers. And then it goes into Adrenaline. This is where a lot of the magic happens. This is the massively scalable. This isn't storage. This is the massively scalable engine that can crunch through data uh, tens of billions of rows of data, sub-second response time, right? And, of course, there's a data lake component to that as well. And then you've got Fusion, where all this data gets normalized, it, it uh, is brought together, and then uh, it goes down. There's a ton of enterprise governance that's taken place, and we've worked, we work with the biggest companies out there, and we're best in class when it comes to security and governance. And of course, we've got Explorer, which is the visualization engine. Uh, part of that engine is what allows you to create the apps. We think we're best in class there. 
there's a lot more that's happening. Now you've brought, again, all the people, all the systems, all the data together. It does make a lot more sense to do more things with, with, uh, with Buzz and with the workflow and just the way that the productivity suite, if you will. And then, of course, you go into Mr. Roboto, the AI, AI engine, and then the App Store. And you're going to hear a lot more about the App Store today, but one of the things that's important is there's no vendor lock-in here. Here's all the other companies that our customers use, and many, many more. This is supposed to be a, a, a representation, a, a sampling of how our customers use our product and how we fit in with other companies out there. And we have a lot of customers that, that uh, use Snowflake, and that's great. We integrate really well with Snowflake. We're a great partner of Snowflake. We're a great partner of AWS. And, uh, you know, of course, there's companies, all these other companies, you know, we integrate with really well. So there's no vendor lock-in. Sometimes we have customers that, you know, that uh, will start and might only use us for one thing. Might only use us for just the integration cloud. Might use us just for connections. But then as we evolve and grow, uh, and as that relationship evolves, you know, there's, there's obviously more opportunity to continue to use different pieces of functionality that we have. So the next piece is one thing that I think is really interesting here. Of course, you have the architecture you just saw, but there's a whole bunch of other services that we've built in our product. And, you know, things, so for instance, entitlements as a service, um, you know, anomaly detection as a service. Whatever data you put in here gets to take advantage of all of these different components that are in our platform. Our platform is this broad. And once you have the power of the platform, once you've installed Domo, once you've connected to as much data as you possibly can, here's the benefits that you get. And eventually, you're going to be able to build out a lot of apps as well that sit on top of this platform. We're launching apps. The ecosystem is building apps. You're going to be building apps. And you're going to see a lot of that today. So after you get the power of the platform, then, you know, you're able to leverage different components here to make Digital 360, which is our media app, your mar our marketing spend app, or our integration cloud leverages some other components. And then I want to give you an example. Here's a real customer of ours, and what they use is one of our Fortune, Fortune 50 customers, and what they use to run their business, and some of the apps that they connect to as well. Well, that's great. We come in. Or the capstone event. Congratulations for all the investments that you've made. We can now come along and help you really leverage that to get the most out of the power of our platform. There's some other examples as well. And not only is there, you know, this is an example where that customer had pretty much everything under the sun. Well, here's a mid-sized company. They don't have a data mart. They don't have customer portals. They don't have custom apps. They don't have a data science lab. And so they're able to leverage us for those things. And again, we come in, we're the capstone event, and you can use us for how, whatever it is and however you need to use us. In that Fortune 50 customer example, and this is a smaller company, they don't have a data lake. They don't have anything from a mobile perspective. And so we're able to lever they're able to leverage us. That Fortune 50 customer I was talking about, they didn't need to use us for a data lake, but eventually they came to us and said, you know what, even though we have all of our data over here and we've spent tens of millions of dollars on this, we actually don't connect everything. Can we use your connectors to connect data, bring it into Domo, push it back into our system so we can still sleep well at night? And we're like, yeah, of course. Customer after customer has come to us and said, we didn't realize that we were building a data lake with Domo, but we just figured out that we have more data in Domo than we do in any of our other systems. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's what we do. So, talked a lot about apps. I want to show you a couple examples. Um, this is an example of some fleet management for IoT. This is a real customer. And, you know, being able to go in and look at how these, customer, how these robots are used throughout the day is something that was really easy for us to go and do because just like the data you bring in, we can connect to anything. And you're going to see more demos about this today. Once you connect to it, we can visualize it any way you want. We can distribute it to whoever you want. Digital 360. This is one of our, the most common things that we saw our customers doing 
was leveraging us for marketing spend. And so we took the best of everyone's usage of it and created Digital 360. And Digital 360 will blow you away. We use it internally and it gives you data that I've never had before in my companies. And I ran a software as a service company that was 100% focused on marketing. So it really does bring, you know, we're taking best practices from what we're seeing with you and then putting that into the product. Franchise management. We have a global res restaurant, a uh, very, very large restaurant chain that is able to dive in and see how their product's being used across the globe. And not how their product, but how their restaurant's performing. So they can walk in and see all the different restaurants, how they're performing, they can rate them. Uh, and it's, you know, this wasn't that expensive. All the data was there. This was just another visualization on top of it that our customers can build, our partners can build, and certainly we can help you and build. So that really is uh, the platform that I wanted to help you understand. I wanted you to understand the flywheel, wanted to understand uh, what we're doing. I've got some really exciting things that we're gonna continue to show you uh, throughout the next couple of days. And um, the next thing I wanna show you is I wanna bring a customer out here uh, to talk about how they're building their business.